Hey you, do we ever wonder about the nature of everything around us? From the beginning of space and time to what is matter made of? I guess you do, right? And we do too. We are theoretical physicists and we physically do it every day. We are striving to find an answer to fundamental questions of nature, but the universe is so complex that, well, it's not an easy task. In this series, you're going to learn about the main challenges that we face and the hottest research topics directly from the researchers. I'm Julia and this is Non-Standard Models. Some of you may have heard about the quantum world. It's a word hidden from us, something we can all really experience in our everyday lives. And it's full of mysteries. If you could shrink to the size of an atom, you would enter a realm where you wouldn't be able to distinguish particles from waves. As theoretical physicists, we want to be able to describe this real world. So throughout the last century, we developed a model for this purpose. This model is called the standard model and is a theory that nowadays best describes the inhabitants of the quantum world, the particles, and how these fundamental building blocks of nature interact among each other. This theory explains these fundamental interactions, namely the electromagnetic, the weak, and the strong interaction. Let's dive into each of these forces. Electromagnetism is the first fundamental force we will talk about. We experience its effects in our daily lives, and we have known many of them since a long time ago. Indeed, electromagnetism plays also a crucial role in all technological objects. Think for example about your smartphone. It can communicate with other phones through electromagnetic waves. If we had the chance to look at very small scales, the quantum scales, we would see something similar happening between two very simple particles in the standard model. Electrons. Electrons communicate, or better said, they interact, by exchanging a photon the particle representation of electromagnetic waves. The understanding of electromagnetism at this deeper level was one of the milestones of the standard model. It gave birth to the idea that fundamental forces could be described by particles interacting with each other. Indeed, this framework inspired a solution to a problem that was puzzled in physicists at the beginning of the 20th century. At that time, it was already known that particles could decay meaning they could transform into other particles. The energy in this process must be conserved, but studying a specific neutron reaction called beta decay, it turned out that some energy was missing. In 1933, Enrico Fermi proposed an elusive particle, the neutrino, was created in this decay through particle interaction. It was the first consistent explanation of what we now call the weak force the force explaining matter transformation rather than its cohesion. Still, the model was not complete. The story was more complicated because three more particles were needed, the W, the Z and the Higgs. The discovery of these mysterious particles was one of the greatest achievements of science. We experimentally discovered the Higgs only 10 years ago, so there are still some mysteries to unravel. Is it really a fundamental particle? Or is there more to the picture than meets the eye? The last fundamental force of the standard model is called the strong force. And as its name indicates, it is the strongest interaction that we know of. But unlike electromagnetism, it is not directly perceptible in our everyday lives because it only acts on a very short range. Still, it is very important, since without it, protons and neutrons would not exist and since we are all made of protons and neutrons, we also would not exist. If you look at the proton very closely, you will find that it is actually made of three smaller particles, called quarks. And the reason why they are not flying away from each other is that the strong force binds them as if they were a single particle. And the more one tries to pull them apart, the more they resist. This is called confinement. And we know from simulations that it is implied by the strong force but we don't have a real theoretical understanding yet. Since we were able to unify electromagnetism and the weak force into a single theory, you may wonder whether the same can be done with the strong force. There exist indeed several proposals for such a grand unified theory, but the new particles that they predict are thought to be well beyond the current experimental reach. 
Whether or not these theories can be accurate descriptions of nature is still an open problem, and until this is settled, the standard model remains a patchwork of theories. An important piece which is still missing from this patchwork is gravity. Gravity was the first force to be discovered and described scientifically. In 1687, Isaac Newton realized that you can describe the motion of celestial bodies by assuming that there is an attractive force between them. And then he said that this force should be universal, meaning that all objects with mass should be attracted to each other. Newton's law of universal gravitation was of huge importance to the development of the laws of physics. A little bit more than 200 years later, Albert Einstein revolutionized the theory of gravity through his theory of general relativity. He proposed that space and time should be treated the same way, and that space-time is not just a flat stage, but instead it's evolving and it has physical properties like curvature. Matter is actually what creates this curvature, and curvature dictates how matter should move. The gravitational force is a consequence of the curvature of space-time. Although this theory accurately describes the motion of objects like ourselves, planets, and galaxies, it falls apart at very short distances, where quantum effects can no longer be ignored. In order to understand more extreme scenarios like the interior of a black hole or what happened in the very early universe, we need a theory of quantum gravity. There is no standard recipe to construct it, even if we have some proposals like string theory. In fact, physicists do not even agree on what quantum gravity is or on what features we expect it to have. Though we don't have a complete theory yet, the recent detection of gravitational waves gives us hope that in the future we will be able to understand quantum gravity even better at the experimental level. Well, the standard model sure is fascinating. Wouldn't you agree? Though, as we mentioned before, there are some open questions. But to tell you the truth, we haven't talked about the elephant in the room. Even if we were able to answer all these questions, we would still miss a description of approximately 95% of our universe, what we call dark matter and dark energy. But don't worry, we're going to explore this frontier in future episodes. So is the Higgs a fundamental particle? How can we describe confinement? What is a theory of quantum gravity? How is the dark matter problem connected to the standard model? Together, we're going to investigate all these questions and more. See you next time here on Non-Standard Models.